Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how you adjust terrain in the 3D view in Garden Planner. So basically how to um, raise garden beds, raise ground, um, have a slope on a lawn, that sort of thing. So I've created a very simple garden to begin with here. We've just got a lawn and uh, a bit of ground and a garden bed at the top there. And then I've just scattered some things on there, a couple of walls and fences, a path, a few trees and a building. Um, mostly randomly placed, the building's just put on the ground in the middle there. And so this is all flat at the moment, and the idea is that we'll uh, switch into the 3D view and have a look and see how we can raise it all up. So there you can see it's all flat. The grass is flat, ground is flat, everything like that. So to change it, um, what we do is we just need to select one of the items. So in this case, let's select um, the garden bed here. And then on the left, um, panel, I'll just click there, select, then you can adjust the terrain and simply clicking on those arrows where it says adjust elevation will raise up or lower the terrain and there you go and you can see the building and the plants that are on there and trees have all been raised up along with it as you'd expect. The fence looks a little strange, that's because the elevation of the fence is based on the, uh, the wall, sorry, um, is based on the start and end point of the wall. Uh, the height of the ground at that particular point. We'll look at that and see how you can improve that in a little bit later in the video. Okay, so that looks all right. We've got a nice raised ground there. Uh, let's go and raise that ground bed behind it. Uh, you can see the fence has been raised up. That's essentially going to be our retaining wall. And then we'll just raise up the ground here. So again, I'm just choosing the terrain, uh, clicking on the garden bed, and then using the arrows. You can enter a value for the terrain if you prefer. Um, the arrows are just there to make it quick and easy. And there we go. Maybe let's go a little bit higher with our terrain there. Um, and there we go, sitting nicely. So we've got a raised garden bed, a bit of ground with a building on it. The garden bed's obviously higher. Um, and then lastly we have a lawn. And at the moment the lawn doesn't look exactly how we want it. Um, it's just flat and what we want to do here is have a sloping lawn going down from the raised ground to the base level. So we choose slope. Uh, I'm just going to look at what height I had that garden bed. Okay that's uh, point not 90 centimeters or three feet. So I'm going to set that as the height for the slope. So I've just clicked on the slope tab there under the terrain option on the left and there we go. There's our sloped lawn and you can see that the um, flowers there have are following the terrain slope um, as is the path here is following the slope up the terrain um, up to where it's the only thing that looks a little unusual is the wall in fact in some cases your wall may actually look like that it may the terrain may be undulating the and wall is straight you can see there i can switch the direction of the slope to all sorts of different strange that's a there it's going from the left to right going down so you can set just by clicking on that little arrow in the circle you can adjust the direction for drain but i'll um, set it back to how we had originally coming down from uh raised ground down to the base ground level um and obviously there are other shapes too you can have like um hills and that sort of thing but in most cases you're probably dealing with uh, slope. Certainly this is a basic tutorial, we're just going to cover that. So now we have a garden bed, uh, a garden where the lawn goes up, you've got raised ground and you've got a raised garden bed. The only thing that looks kind of wrong though is that fence. And what it's doing is, again, as I've said, it takes a height from the start and the end point of the wall. But what we can do is if I delete that wall and then um, redraw it, it will actually take the height from each point I make when I'm drawing it. So if I draw it instead of two clicks for the start and the end of the wall, but if I use a couple of clicks along the way, it will use those as reference points for the height of the wall. Um, if it was a wall with fence posts, then it would be taking the height from fence posts or wall that curves or um, turns corners. But just by doing it, I'll just click on it so you can see um, that it's got that you can see there's um, four points making up the wall, even though it's still a straight line. And there it follows the terrain at those four points, which looks more like how um, we want it here. 
And the reason for that variation is really just depending on the nature of fences and walls. You may have a wall that um, follows the terrain slightly. You may have one that goes very straight, um, depending on the nature of your garden. But in the end there, I think we've got something that looks quite good. We've done it in a couple of minutes. Um, and it shows you how to do the basic height and elevation stuff in Garden Planner. Um, so in most cases, it should auto-update when you move something on. So let's move that path and stick it onto our sloped lawn and ground. And then if I just kind of move the camera around, you can see that the path is now from the flat spot it was before, is now following that lawn and ground. You can also click on the terrain button in the 3D view, and that'll put some grid lines at the bottom of the ground, which helps with just getting your sense of perspective. Um, it also will give you an option to add in, um, uh, choose the option so the camera will follow the terrain as you're walking along. So it will go up the hill and down the hill instead of through the middle. Okay, so that sums it up. I hope you found this interesting. I'll do a more detailed terrain video in the future. Thank you.